All right, Ryan here with longrangeonly.com. In this video, we are going to talk about the 300 PRC. Uh, we're gonna call this my 300 PRC cartridge guide. We'll go over some reload data and we'll talk about why we have a 300 PRC, why Hornady designed it, and why it's important to the shooting industry. So we've already got a cartridge guide in written form on the forum. If you head over to the main page, it'll be at the top, it'll say cartridge guide, and then you can click on the 300 PRC. We already have a couple others as well. And this is the second video of the cartridge guide series that I've put together. We just put one together on the seven millimeter PRC. So let's start with why we have it. You know, there's gonna be, there, there have been, uh, you know, since its introduction, there have been people from both sides some haters, some saying it doesn't offer us anything that we didn't already have, and then there's the other side who think that it's the next coming of Jesus. But the the truth lies somewhere in the middle. It is a great cartridge, and let's let's talk about why. So, the Thrinner Win Mag is a century old design. Uh, a lot of people have issues with the belt. I've never had a problem with the belt personally, but they can cause sizing issues down towards the belt sometimes. It's hard to get that last uh, few thousandths of an inch size. Sometimes it can cause clickers. I, again, have never had a problem with that. The other problem with it is, uh, realistically, it's a little bit longer than it needs to be and skinnier than it needs to be. And I'll talk about, I'll try to wrap that up in, here in a second. It's gonna be kind of hard to keep all this stuff on topic and then, you know, in in chunks of, of uh, information flow but the biggest hindrance of the 300 wind mag is the sammy overall length and the sammy throat design so it was designed in a time where all we really had was or all the shooting industry really had was uh, small for caliber bullets you're talking about 150 grain 160 grain uh, 30 caliber bullets and by today's standards that's pretty small we have seven millimeters that are larger than that. So in my opinion, those are obsolete. You're gonna get the same mass and you're gonna get a higher BC. And you know, if the cartridge case capacity is the same, it's gonna be driven to the same velocity, generally speaking. It'll be a little bit slower when we're not gonna to get too crazy into the ballistics part of it. But its overall length in SAMI form is 3.4 inches. So if you try to cram today's big high BC bullets in that spec, the bullets are gonna be way down into the case and they're gonna be eating up case capacity. Now, there are, uh, you know, bullets like the 215 Burger can be seated out farther in a SAMI chamber and touch the lands and still be under like a 3.7 inch, which is what most of the Remington magazine boxes that I've had my hands on are, but some of the rifles out there, for whatever reason, they're still building to that old SAMI spec. So your standard long action magazine boxes under 3.4 inches because those cartridges had an overall SAMI length of 3.4 inches. So what that does for the 300 Win Mag is for all those factory hunting rifles, all the different options, the Brownings, the Rugers, uh, uh, even some of the seven millimeters, you're, sh li you're hindered, you're limited to that short magazine length. So the only option to really deal with that is to build a custom and reload your own ammo because all of the ammo is going to fall into that same spec. It's going to be small for caliber bullets and they're going to be shoved way down in the cartridge case. So as far as I'm concerned by the standards that our cartridges are being built to today, the 300 Win Mag in SAMI and factory form is obsolete. There would be no reason I would buy one other than if you want to try to hang on to this, if I go somewhere and I lose my ammo, uh, I'm not gonna have anything if I choose a different cartridge and 300 Win Mag is almost always available somewhere at the local Walmart or at the local sporting goods store. I've never forgotten my ammo, number one. Number two, 
I'm almost always hunting with somebody so I could borrow their rifle. And if I go overseas, which is a lot of the, the, the stories I hear, I want that in case I go overseas, there's going to be ammo. You can always use your outfitter's rifles in a pinch, which is going to be, in my opinion, better off than going and getting rif your uh, rifle some different ammo and then having to go through sighting it in and all that stuff. You'd be better off just using someone else's rifle that you know is going to shoot and it's ready to go. So I don't. I think that's a moot point personally. Okay, so let's go to another option here and go with the 30 nozzler. So the 30 nozzler has more case capacity, but for whatever reason, nozzlers designed it to the old standard of 3.4 inches. It's an obsolete century-old standard. They're still building their rifles to that standard. I don't get it. And it's probably why the 30 nozzler is going to die. And the same shortcomings in the 30 nozzler uh, are the ones that I just talked about with the 300 Win Mag. They're too short. If you go with the big bullets by today's standard, the bullets are stuffed way down in the case and they're eating up precious case capacity. Now, let's, let's kind of dance around the 300 Piercy and then we'll, we'll dive into it uh, specifically. So the 300 Win Mag, the case capacities are anywhere from roughly 89 grains up to 95 grains, depending on which brand of brass. The biggest brand of brass, uh, as far as capacity-wise goes, is Norma, and it's about 95 grains. The 30 Nozzler is about 99, clear up to 102, depending on which brand you get. ADG is the biggest at right around 102 grains of water capacity in fired brass. And then you've got the 300 PRC, which is about 95 to 97 grains, depending on which brand you get. The ADG is around 95, and the Hornady is around 97. So the physics of it, and a lot of people, for whatever reason, want to get emotional and try to start arguments all over the internet about this. The physics of it can't be argued with. The 300 Win Mag, generally speaking, is the smallest, and its largest case capacity is right in line with the smallest case capacity of the 300 PRC. The 30 Nozzler is the biggest of the bunch. If everything were miraculously the same, that's how the velocities would fall, the peak velocities. 300 Win Mag would be the smallest, 300 PRC would be right in the middle, and the 30 Nozzler would be the fastest, period. You can't argue with physics, that's just how it is. Now, because of the fact that not all barrels are going to be the same, not all actions are going to be the same, all that stuff, there's going to be overlap between the cartridges. And then we're not going to get into this, but you don't get to pick where the tune of the rifle is. It tells you where it is if you're doing load development. And there's going to be a lot of overlap between them. Now, I don't know percentages, but it's going to be on the small side. But there's going to be cases where a 300 Win Mag will run the same velocities as a 30 Nozzler. And the 30 Nozzler is going to be slow. The 300 Win Mag is going to be fast. And then the 300 PRC is going to fall right in between that. So like I said, there will be overlap. A great example is the last 30 Nozzler I built. Even though I could run it well over 3,100 foot per second, with a 215 burger, there wasn't any accuracy there. I had to run it at 3,000 foot per second. Now, having said that, I personally have never been able to get a 300 PRC or a 300 Win Mag to run a 215 burger 300 or 3,000 foot per second in a 26 inch barrel. So th that really kind of proves my point. The physics behind it will dictate the, the velocity. If you want a 300 PRC to outrun a 300 rum or a 30 nozzle, you're looking in the wrong spot. You might as well just start with the bigger case capacity and go with a 30 nozzle or a 300 rum. The fact is most of the shooters out there are going to be buying factory ammo and factory rifles. And those are the guys that are gonna keep these cartridges going. It's not gonna be the 10% or whatever that number is. It's probably smaller than that. Every loader's in custom rifle builders. It's going to be the guys going and buying factory options. And today we have more great factory options in both ammo and rifles than ever before. But I think I just did a real good job of explaining why it's the best in factory form. It's got a, it's got a longer throat and an overall length 
that's better than the other two. So I talked about why the other two weren't great options and I talked about their shortcomings. Now let's focus in on the, what I just said about the fact that it's got the right dimensions from the factory. So it has a maximum overall length of 3.7 inches. So that's going to allow those bigger modern bullets to be seated out of the case and not eat up case capacity. It has roughly the same case capacity as the other two. Generally speaking, in factory form, you're going to be able to get more velocity. Now, like I just said, the reloader will not be able to, the, the physics for that is gonna be what I just talked about. 300 wind mag, the slowest, 300 PRC right in the middle, 30 nozzle are the fastest. So we talked about why this was better. The, the factory dimensions are better. The SAMI dimensions are better. Uh, what Hornady was going for was a nice, uh, stable, consistent, and accurate round over thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. After all, we're, we're talking about the people that are going to be driving the sales of this are the uh, guys shooting factory ammo and factory rifles. And so they didn't go with the hot rod loads and try to run with the 30 nozzler velocities. They stayed right there in a comfortable zone. And I'll put up some load data up here for some different factory options. And then we're gonna move on to the, the reloaders. So in SAMI form, it is by far the best option here. They've got the proper throat. It allows the bullets to be seated out and you're not cramming bullets down in the cartridge case like you would on the 300 Win Mag and the 30 Nosler. Let's move on to reloading and why, why you would want to pick one reloading. When you're reloading, if you're gonna use a factory rifle, you basically are limited to somewhat the same issues that I just talked about. Some of these rifles have short magazine boxes and they have a little bit shorter throats. Even the 30 Nosler, it has a shorter throat than it should, plus the fact that it's got a short SAMI overall length. And the 300 Win Mag is somewhat limited to the same. It's kind of got a weird throat. It's got an old, old uh, design throat, but some of those uh, non-VLD or non-hybrid type bullets are gonna be stuffed down in the case, even if you're reloading, even if it's in a rifle that has that longer magazine box the throat could limit you a little bit now for guys that are going full-blown custom you can put whatever throat you want in it and a Wyatt's box is going to be 3.850 inches and that's becoming the standard in rifle builds today so you could put any of those in a custom rifle you can throw them out uh, plus uh you can throw them out over 200 thousands of free bore and essentially get the same throats in them. And that's going to come right back to what I just said. Generally speaking, the velocities are going to follow case capacity. So the 30 nozzle would be the fastest, 300 PRC would be the middle, and the 300 wind mag would be the slowest. Once again, there will be overlap. And there will be cases when a 300 wind mag is running 30 nozzle speeds, and then the, the 300 PRC will, will slide along and sometimes made up with the smaller and the larger case capacities of the other cartridges. So why would you choose to build that over, say, a 30 Nosler? I love the 30 Nosler. I've found them to be very easy to tune at long range. Uh, the thing is, I'm starting to see that the 300 PRC will just stay in tune a little bit longer and that it has wider uh, nodes and again not every barrel is going to be the same so I can't guarantee that you're going to buy a 300 PRC or build a 300 PRC and it's going to fall into that some barrels are just picky and that's all there is but I'm starting to see that it does have generally speaking wider tune windows why wouldn't you just pick a, a 300 wind mag to me the case design is better in the 300 PRC you don't have to mess with the short throat or short neck and you don't have to mess with the belt. 300 PRC has a little bit bigger case capacity, not really enough to make it the sole purpose or sole reason for choosing that cartridge, but I would lean more towards the little bit longer neck, which would allow you 
different bullet options while keeping the bullet in the neck. Those really short necks like on the 300 Win Mag and the 7mm WSM can be a hindrance if you want to shoot different bullets. And that's probably more important today than it has been in the past decade just because the the component availability. You may want to build a rifle to shoot 215 burgers or even 230 burgers, 225 ELDMs, and you may not be able to find them. And right now you can get 220X bullets, you can get the 200 uh, grain ELDXs sometimes, and those shorter bullets are going to want to seat out of the, the cartridge more. If you don't have the neck length for it, then you're going to be having to do a, a jump. And the, the rifle may shoot, it may not, but the point is the longer neck gives you more flexibility. That's, that's just a fact. You're not always going to use that flexibility, but it's there. So I would choose it because you want to focus more on a, a wide, stable accuracy window as opposed to raw performance. And then I would choose it over the 300 Win Mag just because it's a better case design. And generally speaking, for some guys that are spending a lot of money to build a custom rifle that they may own for the next 30 years, they really do believe it's going to be the one and done for them. I think you have the best availability of components down the road. Only time will tell. I don't have a crystal ball, but that is my prediction. So let's dive into the nuts and bolts of this. Um, all three cartridges are going to basically take the same components. They're going to respond well to any large rifle primer. The only two I have experience with in these cases is the 215M and the CCI 250. They're going to respond very well to any of the Magnum powders. You got the Reloader 26, H1000, and you've got N565, N570. This is really good for speed, the Reloader 26, especially with the middleweight bullets. Uh, N570 is going to suit you better when you get to the 215, uh, 220, 230 bullets. And uh, N565, and I'm probably pointing at the wrong one. So, yeah, you can read read the, the bottles here. But the N565 and the H1000 are going to be very similar burn rates, and they're going to respond very well. In my experience, they have given really wide and stable tune windows. N570 does a real good job too and it's going to generally speaking it's going to give you faster velocities. I wouldn't hesitate to use any of them. Reloader 26 I'm starting to fall out of uh, love with it. It's It just does some weird things. It seems to be temp stable in all of my testing but you get these unexplained flyers and it is very very dirty and fouls very quickly. So uh, I know a, guy, a lot of guys love it, and it is worth checking out, but I would lean towards these other powders personally. I just have some of the bullets here, and I will do some drop-ins to show you some close-ups of this stuff, show you some close-ups of these different uh, bullets, uh, these and some others, and then show you a close-up of these cartridges right here. But 215 burgers, they're my favorite. Honestly, probably wouldn't look for another bullet if availability was... Uh, what we need it to be, but it's simply not, so you may have to look for other options. We've had good luck with the Burger 205s as far as accuracy-wise. I personally have never killed anything with one. And then you've got the 210 Burgers, both VLD Target and VLD Hunting, both great options. And yes, they will both kill animals, and they will do it very quickly. You've got the 225 ELDM. I've killed some milk with that. It's a great bullet, So it's and, and they tune very well, too. And they've got a, a pretty high BC, but the bearing surface makes them go pretty slow. So you can't usually crank the velocity up. So often the BC gain's not really worth the velocity loss. But it is a great option, especially when you don't have a lot of uh, choice. So, and then let's just talk real quick, just hit on some high level loads here and do some comparisons. So the... The 30 nozzler, generally the node is going to be with a 215 burger and a 26 inch barrel. It's going to be somewhere between 3,000 and 3,100 foot per second. Uh, I've never personally been able to get a 300 PRC or a 30, 300 Win Mag up to 3,000 foot per second. I know guys that have, guys that I trust have, but I've never been able to. It will destroy brass, and I've never seen any accuracy there. So 
30 nozzler, roughly 3,000 to 3,100 foot per second with the 215 burger in the 300 PRC. I've seen anywhere from 2,900 foot per second up to 2,950 foot per second. And the tune's usually pretty wide and stable, which is something I prefer because when you're in changing conditions, you have confidence that the load's gonna continue to shoot. And then the 300 Win Mag, I've personally have seen anywhere from upper 2800s to the 29, 30, 29, 40 foot per second range with the 215. And all of those are with H1000. Now, if you run N570, those velocities are gonna go up. Again, your rifle's gonna dictate what it prefers but you're probably going to be capable of getting another 50 to 100 foot per second. Uh, in the case with the 30 nozzler, when you're comparing N570 versus H1000, if you're running the 3100 foot per second with H1000, you are most likely not going to hit the next node with N570. That is something to consider. Reloader 26, in my experience, with the 300 wind mag and the, the 300 PRC, you're gonna gain another 50 foot per second over whatever H1000 was doing. And then the same can be said with N565. I will drop in some 300 PRC loads that we have tested and some of our forum members have tested to be accurate. So you can take a look at those. Go ahead and wrap this up. We talked about why we have the 300 PRC, why Hornady designed it. And that is because the other throat designs and cartridge designs in SAMI form were obsolete. They're, they're antiquated designs from last century and we needed something in factory form that could get those bullets out of the case and utilize all of that case capacity and give the guy that just wants to go grab an accurate rifle off the shelf some ammo that will actually use that rifle to its full potential. What the reloader got was another great case that is designed properly. We don't have to worry about spec in the throat. Um, you can probably work with a gunsmith that has played with it and get a little bit better throat dimensions. Someone who's spent some more time to, to work on a specific bullet. And the same could be said for all of those cartridges. But what you get is a great case capacity for the 30 caliber and it falls right in between the bigger 30 nozzler and the smaller 300 wind mag. So it's another great option for the reloader. What the reloader is going to be able to do is we're going to be able to ride on the coattails of the factory ammo because it's going to be a success because because of the fact that it's got the proper SAMI dimensions and the rifle builders, the, the production rifle builders are going to latch onto it. And you've already seen that. It's been out for a couple years now and we are gonna get more and more factory ammo options and they are going to be better than the factory ammo options of the other two uh, cartridges because what I've been harping on this entire time, the SAMI specs. So it's gonna be able to use the same Magnum powders. Uh, I didn't talk about any of the Reloader 19s, Reloader 22s, Reloader 25s. They're all gonna be great, but they're not temp stable, so I don't like using them. It's gonna do great with the Magnum rifle uh, primers, large rifle primers, and then any of those 30 caliber bullets. It's mainly geared towards uh, 200 grain up, but you could use smaller if you want. It doesn't make sense to me. I would build a seven if you want to shoot smaller. So I think that really talks about all of it. I dropped in some pictures of these cartridges so you can get a, a generalization of how they compare next to each other. And then I dropped in some pictures of different bullet options as well. We popped up some reloading data on the screen. You can pause on that. But if you want to know all this information if you want to be able to look at it and have it in one spot so you can just read it and, and digest it then the best place is going to be to go to the cartridge guide on the forum so like i said at the beginning we'll have a link to the forum cartridge guide in the description below i will also have a link to a thread on the forum where you can head over and you can discuss this with me you can ask me any questions about the 300 prc 
we want to keep it on track with a 300 PRC. I do have other cartridge guides for the 300 Win Mag and the 30 Nosler with discussion threads on those as well. And we will be working on video cartridge guides as I have time. So I think that covers everything. We talked about why we have it. We talked about the components that you're going to use. We gave you a little bit of load data. And then I told you where you can go to look at these cartridge guides and ask me any questions. Please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and turn on notifications so you can be notified of future video releases. If you're not a member on the forum, go ahead and sign up. It's quick, it's free, it's easy. There's a lot of great information, a lot of great guys with information that we don't necessarily share on the YouTube channel, and we would love to have you. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.